Lisa Kinley here in Venice Beach, California, where people come down in droves to be entertained by a multitude of street performers that are constantly having to come up with new and innovative ways of capturing the imagination of the onlookers. One entertainer who has never had a problem with entertaining the masses is Madonna. In the next half hour, we're going to take a look at what and who Madonna is, and we're going to be speaking with the Queen of Pop herself, Madonna, as well as foremost Madonna experts like Denise Bella Vlasis, uh, America's preeminent Madonna impersonator. For the last 16 years, Denise has been impersonating Madonna, discovering the essence of what Madonna is, and becoming as close as she can to Madonna. Hey! hey. Denise Bella Vlasis, um, preeminent Madonna impersonator. We're in your work room. Mm -hmm. um, it's my workspace. Wow, it's incredible, the likeness. <laughs> well, yeah, it, some looks are better for me, some looks are stronger, some are not as strong, but this one's a little bit trickier because it's a little more natural. Can you this, show us around your room? And This is my room, this is my work room. Most of the time I'm sitting right there on that computer. Does Madonna um, use computers? Yeah, you know, actually, yeah. That's her new thing now, she's saying. She's, she just won her uh, domain name. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're thing. right. So, yeah, she's, she says she's on the internet, but more than her is Lourdes. Lourdes is actually really? learning the computer quite a bit. That's the baby. What? The baby. The baby on top of the drum. Which baby? That, that was Lourdes. I had a job for 20th Century Fox the day Madonna gave birth, so. This is Lourdes. She fell apart. Her little head came off and her little Chanel necklace. This is my little collage of all the scary early days. And just like Madonna, I don't like to look back at these things. <laughs> it's like, oh no, did I really do that? I had to work with a pig, and I'm terrified of pigs. And the National Enquirer wanted to do a story, Madonna goes to the Oscars with Babe, and I'm terrified of pigs. Um, clothes? Yeah, let's take a look at your closet. Oh, I don't even own clothing, isn't that sad? I <laughs> I have costumes. And tell us about the fashion evolution of Madonna. Uh, well, we, you know, she started off with lots of, let's see, boy toy, the bangles and the bracelets and the boy Madonna allows us to know where she's at, usually through a video or music, a certain sense of where she is spiritually or where she is emotionally, boyfriend-wise. You know, the things that she tries in her life and checks out usually comes through in a video. I think, you know, that part of her that still questions religion, still questions Christianity, and, and also that desire to push buttons to say, I want, I want to think about this, I want other people to think about this. Can you tell us some characteristics that are essential, like Madonna 101? <laughs> Madonna um, 101. Uh, what are the traits that you have to do? Flare the nose. Madonna's flaring her nose a lot. And she does this thing with her eyes, and it's... Um, Body language-wise, it means that I'm thinking a lot, and she does this, you'll notice, the eyes are always going blinking, and it means I'm thinking faster than I'm speaking. I was thinking of calling my record Veronica Electronica. Okay. And uh, changed my mind. There's a certain, like, thing she does with her voice, like it, it comes up into her throat a little bit. It depends on which Madonna she's being, like the calmer Madonna, or if she's putting it on a little bit more. When she puts it on, she kind of gets a little bit more sassy and a little more like comments, little funny comments, and okay, you know, I'm fabulous, let's go. And the little bitchy thing comes out a little bit more. And, um, but it, it kind of depends on where she is, because lately she's been a little more calm, or she's really silly. Oh. There you go. Good luck. We're good. Uh, good luck, Brian. What do you think of her new face? Like um, the uh, the the, uh, the new latest incarnation from Ray of Light to uh, music. Music, yes. I think Ray of Light was so beautiful to me. I love the whole Eastern Indian. I love that. Hey, can we do a, um, an experiment? Yeah. I would love to be able to practice my. Um, my interview with the real Madonna, okay. with you. Okay. And can you see if you can role play her okay. as if, not Denise, but as if, if you, can you channel sure. Madonna? Yeah. And we can, we can like, try to try to do that. Get you ready. Yeah. Any tips on like what I should do with um, the uh, interview? Be, be fearless. Have a sense of humor, and don't ask her about the past. Have good body language with her when you, before you start. Be like very interested in her, like lean forward. But don't kiss her ass, because she knows when people kiss her ass. She'll either be really relaxed with you and open like this, but very grand, 
or she'll do something weird if she feels uncomfortable and that'll be like arms crossed or arms over here like this, but I can't do it because I'm, I'm all furry, but I think she'll be like this because okay. she's very proud of this album. Two. <clears throat> um, hi, Madonna. I'm Suki and Lee from hi. Much Music. Hi. Hi. Why was it that you wanted to do a takeoff of hip hop and, and rap stereotypes? Well, I figure it's something that all the hip hop men are doing and why not a woman? And I'm the woman to do it. Do you find that with each look you learn something more about yourself? I don't think I think about it that much. I think I just, whatever catches my eye at the time, and that's what I do. Well, thank you very much, Madonna. You're welcome. And we're looking forward to the next um, phase in your career. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you mean got... Woo! Now it's time for the real thing. I'm standing in front of the prestigious Bel Air Hotel. Um, the strains of classical music in the distance and tons of fancy schmancy expensive cars. Over there, I'm here to interview the queen of pop, Madonna, 14th album music. Let's see how well Denise prepared me for this moment. Let's go in. Oh, and look, a concert. Oh, and look, a wedding. A wedding through the arches. In fact, that's the wedding of George Roscoe Jean. Hi. How do we get into the hotel? This is the hotel. Oh. Where's the area that there's a meeting place, like a... A lobby? A lobby. Right around the corner. You guys just passed it. We're here just to interview Madonna. Okay. One of the... Frank will be by momentarily. Who's Frank? Frank is the person who is coordinating the people who are making the interviews. Hey, they have an, is that a real fireplace? Well, it's gas, but it, it goes, it's, it's going uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's more for show than for blow, really. Okay. Okay, uh, Madonna, the new music video. Mm-hmm. Uh, why? Mock Daddy. Mock Daddy, Muff no, Daddy, Muff Daddy. Muff Daddy. Mm -hmm. um, why did you decide to do a takeoff on hip hop and R and B stereotypes? Because I just thought it was hysterical that every hip hop and, and R and B video that came out basically had the same scenario. You know, going out in a limousine, drinking champagne, and going to strip clubs, and lots of girls booty shaking and their g strings, blah blah blah. And I just thought it's weird. Only guys make those kind of videos. How can girls never do it? So then, of course. I thought, well, that's a good idea. I think I'll do it. It's just a funny aesthetic to get into, you know, the whole, you know, rock with my homies, yeah, and wearing a, you know, lots of gold jewelry and, you know, Mommy. just being so flash and it was fun. You had a fun time doing oh, it. Oh yeah, cool. definitely. It's also as well uh, a provocative video. Um, this, the uh, girl, girl on girl sex stuff. The lap dancing with the stripper made some make some viewers uncomfortable. Good. Why? Why do you first? Of all, why do you think they're uncomfortable? Well, first of all, girls go to strip clubs all the time and get lap dances, you know. But we only see guys doing it. It's not about you know girls. It's not even about lesbians. It's just about women having fun and going out and being naughty and and silly and you know doing things that guys think are only you know their territory and just. Sometimes it's funny to sort of flip it all around. Why do you think people are uncomfortable? Society, or segment of society, is uncomfortable with the flip of genders like that? The, or the roles, those flippings of role, roles? Um, because society's uncomfortable with anything that's different, period. You sing about this as well on mm -hmm. the album, the idea of how the social conditioning of females having to dumb themselves down in order to be accepted right. by society. As, mm -hmm. a, as a powerful person, mm -hmm. why, uh, why do you think that people are intimidated by you? Because men, uh, uh, society associate power with men, and we live in a patriarchal society. Um, and I think that the idea of a woman having power is just, it's just, it's just new. It's new to people. Um, I mean, from the beginning of time, there have been lots of women who have had power, but 
most women pay a very high price for it. You also are singing about love, like songs of sort of paying, celebrating love. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in a romantic one true love? I believe that everyone has a soulmate. Just a, one singular? Or do you believe in the idea yeah. that yeah, you, you do? I think you, there are lots of people that are on this earth that you're supposed to be with, spend time with, that are going to teach you things, but I think you only have one soulmate. What constitutes a soulmate? What attracts one to one soulmate? Is it a similar energy? Um, yeah, similar. I just, I just think you complement each other. It's, you know, yin and yang. How, do you feel like you've discovered that? <laughs> That's the favorite question of the day. Um, yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. That must be very exciting. Mm -hmm. it must be weird. It's weird. Hey, folks. Still to come, a whole lot more Oh Madonna. So, uh, Freddie the singer, take it away. Take us through the commercial break. Like a virgin, touched for the very first time. Like a virgin, with your heartbeat next to mine. Madonna special. I'm here in Venice Beach at a stall that sells masks from around the world. Entertainers have used masks and costumes in order to perform. For example, Denise puts on her Madonna mask to impersonate Madonna. She's made a 16-year career out of being a Madonna impersonator. And Madonna herself, throughout her career, has reinvented herself using a number of different looks and masks, which begs the question, why the mask and what's behind it? I feel like I'm meeting, some, well, I'm meeting somebody who's like a cultural phenomenon. I feel like you're right up there beside the Pope and Ronald McDonald, you know? Cool. Cool. <laughs> um, and I'm wondering what is, can you give us a glimpse or a sense of the Madonna that we don't get to see? Oh, you get to see it. It's just whether you're clocking it or not. It's just whether you're paying attention to the subtleties. What, what, like? What? Um, I don't know. I, you do feel like everything's out there. You put everything out there. I think that there's a lot out there that people don't, aren't tapping into. But they see a lot of the super, super over. They see the obvious stuff. But yeah. there are nuances and there are subtleties and more. I think people who are more insensitive see those things. And what, what are those things, do you think, are the things that people don't usually key into? Um, my sense of irony and um, my insecurity, stuff like that. Yeah, that's their hey. Well, they just don't, you know, most people don't look at me and go, oh, God, she's insecure. They, they want to equate you with power, mm. total power. Like, I just spent a day talking with a Madonna impersonator, and you've changed her life in that she was incredibly shy before. But mm -hmm. when she's Madonna, mm -hmm. she just, she feels Madonna is total power. That's funny. When I'm Madonna, I feel the opposite. What have you learned about yourself through the whole uh, cowgirl ghetto chic sort of image. I love the juxtaposition of urban and rural. I mean, that's, to me, and to me, that's what the sound of my album is. Why are you doing what you're doing? What fuels your work? Um, searching for meaning in life. Trying to figure out what, I, what, what it is that I've been put on this earth to do and say. Do you get a sense of that, what your mission? What is? Yeah, I'm here to provoke people. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a provocateur, no yeah. ultimate agenda. No, oh, but more but to like inspire. get people to talk about stuff. To be awake, to ask questions, to challenge themselves. And what's a big question you're contemplating these days? What am I going to have for dinner? Have you, have you thought of, what, what are you going to have for dinner? <laughs> okay.